have the pleasure of being with Anna Maria Masidi, who is from my Wednesday night 630 group. And for a long time, when I would see Anna Maria on the screen, you just sat and smiled. And when people would share good news, you were always like, oh, I did not know who you were. I just saw your beautiful face. And then one day in a meeting, I think the first time you really spoke, we were talking about keeping your metabolism thrown off a little bit with like having some high calorie days or low calorie, just sort of keeping things mm -hmm. guessing, keep it guessing. Do you remember this moment? I do. I do. A metabolic confusion has always been a huge part of my journey. I didn't know anything about you or your story. Yeah. You said that, that really was helpful for me as I lost, is it 180? three pounds 183 at this point yeah yeah I said this is a rude question but I'm just curious have you had surgeries along the way she said no I remember you said no praise God I haven't had to do that so I said Anna Maria please come and talk to a sister <laughs> what brought you to this way of eating I'd love to um listen Italian girl from Brooklyn okay <laughs> pasta homemade food Nothing out of a box or a can. Everything was fresh, but it was abundant. Yeah. And I was raised that way in an amazing household, really blessed. A couple of years ago, I went for some annual blood work and, oh boy, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. My um, All of my inflammatory markers were out of control. I went on blood pressure meds because my blood pressure was out of control. I was pre-diabetic. Um, I could barely walk sometimes due to the lipedema. Mm. A lot of people don't know about that, but it's a horrible connective tissue disorder. Mostly affects women, mostly legs and limbs, yeah. arms. Um, I always had IBS bloated. I was, I was always sick as much as I have the joy of the Lord. Yes. I was always sick in body. I was always not well, always feeling like that gave me a sense of shame because I've got 15 nieces and nephews and I don't want to be that kind of a testimony for them. I mean, I was, I was pushing 400 pounds. You have to come to the end of yourself. That day came and I'm going to say it. I don't care who don't like it. I cried out to Jesus. Oh well, yes, I did. I was in pain. I was miserable. And I just said, you know what? There's so many people around me. My, my boss was one of them. He started this low carb stuff. And I'm the type I read and I research and I learned about intermittent fasting. That's been one of the big keys for me throughout. So I confuse my body because if I do the same thing, having to lose so much weight, my body will freeze up on me and won't give. Cause why we were created to be preserved, right? The last, right? So your body's always going to try to fight you. Then I went with the I, 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 I joined your group, Kelly, because I needed a tribe. I needed encouragement. I joined to hear others' stories, to be encouraged, to learn, because no one knows everything. But we all have something, these little golden nuggets that we can glean off of each other. That's the benefit of your group. And that's why I'm so grateful to have found you. The fact that you have faith in the true and living God. That rocks my world. <laughs> I always say in this life, sheesh, I'm okay in a log cabin with a Bible in a bed and a ribeye. Don't ribeye. take my ribeye. I want my ribeye. <laughs> so that's the beginning. I started to read and then I see this stuff on my YouTube feed and I thought it was a cult. You're going to laugh. Ken Berry, Dr. Berry. He pops up and I'm like, oh my goodness, this has to be. This has to be a cult. Who eats just meat? This is ridiculous. Now, one of the things I did throughout my journey was journal. I journaled everything I ate, I drank, how much I moved, which wasn't too much. Being so big and uncomfortable, I can get in the water at the Y and stretch and kick a little bit, but I did it mostly for this, you know? It was like a stress relief. And as I logged, I realized I still have IBS. I still I still have these punches coming out of my gut. If if anyone ever suffers from stomach issues, that they're, they're no fun. They're they're debilitating, weakening, you know? Yeah. I decided through watching Dr. Berry and reading Judy Cho's book, 
that elimination diet helped me, the carnivore cure. It helped me. Boom, never looked back. It's been almost 14 months on 100% carnivore. I refuse to be on the cycle of medicine. In Italian, we say, alimenti fanno tanto. Your food does much. Start there. We're human beings. It's time to eat like human beings. Anything with a barcode, I'm sorry. No good for me. What if it's a box of sardines? Well, sister, listen, I eat my sardines too. And I love them, love them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, I realized that the lifestyle that we live as carnivores is a body optimization lifestyle. So if my body wants to keep losing, it will. And by the grace of God, it's going to be fine. I just keep eating good meat yeah. and I feel great, Kelly. I feel great. Oh, you sure look great, friend. You seem like you feel great. You're always you. a source of energy and joy. Every time you ever have spoken in the groups, people, they listen. It's partly why Thank I wanted you. you here. You are Thank you so much. Very, very inspiring. All right. You said you had to find exactly what works for you. Could you tell me more? What is that? Sure. There are doctors, there are influencers, there are encouragers, and everyone's sharing a ton of different things. And I glean right? So the protein sparing modified fast, I added two days in, broke a stall, did wonderfully. Do you still do about two days of PSMF every week? No, but you did while you were losing. Yes. Did you do the two days each week back to back? No. No. You'd I would be like okay. Monday, a Thursday. Yeah. And Monday. what did those two days look like when you did those? It was mostly like chicken breast, okay. London broil, um, even lean pork loin without the fat around it, which is okay. terrible when you cut up that fat. So I just kind of, I just tried to have maybe a little bit of butter with something because you got to have some fat, at least 30 grams, it looked like for me. Okay. Um, and I just, yeah. That's pretty much what I would do. The leaner meat instead of, you know, my chicken thighs and chicken wings, which I really like. I went for the chicken breast, which I quite honestly don't like. Okay. So most days during that time, you would have sort of standard meats, whether it was your chicken thighs, chicken wings, ribeye, which all of those things tend to fall at around 70, 30 macros for anybody that's curious, 75, 25. And then two days per week, not back to back. You would do more pure protein days. Did you limit calories on those days or just? I don't know. I never don't know. You tell me to count. I'm going to lose it, sister. Blah, blah, blah. Can't handle I got it. You. Noted. I usually try to eat within a five and six hour window, two meals. And mm -hmm. then there's a, um, this metabolic confusion where I may have one day a week. I'm eating three meals in eight hours. Once in a while, I'll eat one big old ribeye. Okay. At this point, if I stay at this weight, I'm quite happy. So that's why I'm not pushing. I just, I eat good quality meat. Um, doesn't always have to be grass fed, <laughs> you know, supermarket meat is just fine. Um, and I just, I continue on good eggs, I had duck eggs this morning. They were wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's going to give people a lot of things to consider cutting yeah. out carbs, metabolic confusion, um, I've been encouraging people lately to figure out your standard carnivore diet first and then to pick a couple of days, whether it's to do something weird, weird, right? Whether that is a sardine fast, fat fast, a pure protein day. Some people love water fasting or bone broth fasting. Like just pick a couple of days, mix it up, change your windows. And I yes. just think it up. The fact that you lost that 183 pounds doing this and you, I appreciate that you also say there were times of stalls. There were times I guarantee where there's going to be some frustration. People yeah. don't realize it's just constant. That's not usually how it works. There's moments of what mm -hmm. can I change now? Right? What can I do? And I like that you always gave it a full two weeks, not just oh, yeah. two weeks to yeah. see how it's affecting you and be a happy little scientist. Those are great yeah. takeaways. That's exactly it. Always moving forward that way. That's the way we have to do it. It's not easy. It's a challenge. But if you have a bit of a tribe that you can bounce things off of, it's worth it. If you prepare 
For me, the meal prepping is critical. I've got two huge chuck roasts in a big crock pot going. It's just going to go. And I, you know what? Section it off and I've got it for several days. Um, I do what I have to do to overcome. And sometimes it takes a little bit more effort, but you are worth it. God created us so beautifully. He cares and he's the one directing our paths. So I firmly believe that in my heart. As do I. I click with you. I love you, Anna Maria. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> yes, you are my sister, my sister. All right, love you so much, and I'll see you on. Lord bless you. Lord bless you, bye. Bye.